Welcome to Lecture and welcome to part 3 on how to create weapon skins for Counter-Strike Global Offensive. In this tutorial we are taking a look at the Alpha Channel and how that Alpha Channel actually translates into wear in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This tutorial will be bound to Photoshop only, but that does not mean that the technical aspect about the Alpha Channel is different. The technical aspect is the same across every platform or software that you use, so no worries about that. If you understand what I'm doing, you can do it in any other program you like. So, right in front of me we have the AWP texture laid out, and as you can see I went ahead and added some colors to this sheet and some shapes to the front of the barrel. This is to illustrate my point about the alpha channel. So first and foremost, where can we find the alpha channel inside of Photoshop? Well, if you go to the channels tab in Photoshop, you can see your RGB layers and then you can see another layer which is called alpha. When you export this texture from the game file, there are some more scratches on this alpha channel. I made it completely black just to start off clean with a clean sheet. So. A grayscale value, what is that all about? The grayscale value works is a simple way of working. You have 0% which is completely white and you have 100% which is completely black. Everything in between there is a gray value. So Counter-Strike Global Offensive in terms of wear only utilizes uh, the grayscale value from 50 to 100%. Pretty much everything below 50% is worn in factory new, minimal wear, field tested, well worn and battle scarred. It is at, worn at all times. So we will be mainly focusing and working with grayscale gray values over 50%. So now that we have the alpha channel laid out, let's go ahead and let's say 65%. Let's set the alpha channel to 65% grayscale value, and let's go ahead and save that and preview that in game. Real quick, let's go for tutorial three. Open up our VTF edit, import our tutorial three, and keep in mind, just like I said in the second tutorial, please make sure that your alpha format is set to DXT5 because we are working with alpha channels at the moment, and we want it to be to be read by the game. We import the texture file. Save is under tutorial 3.vtf, open up our game and go to our workbench. As I said and showed earlier, we select custom paint job, select our desired weapon, which is the AWP. Click workbench real quick. Set the shader values to 255 and 0 for no shading, pretty much just no white haze around the weapon. Set all our offsets to zero except for the wear remap. Load our texture up from FCSGO skins 2017 tutorial 3 and tutorial 3.vtf. And last but not least, select ignore weapon size skill. And the first thing I at least noticed is that the orange scope that I created is gone for some reason. While we knew we selected 65%, and as you can see, the weapon is set as factory new. And even if it's factory new, the scope is black. This is an issue a lot of users come across, and I get this question asked a lot of times, why is my texture unscoped? And that has everything to do with the alpha channel. When we look further at the weapon, we can see that this part is uh, default paint, that's because I did not paint it, and all our shapes are correct and displayed correctly. When we go to battle scarred, completely battle scarred, we can see that it's completely gone. And that is exactly what we want. This might be a lot of wear at the same time, so I'd personally put it up to like maybe 60% and I would rework the whole alpha channel in general. But let's jump back into Photoshop and fix the issue we have first with the scope. So let's put it back at factory new, go into Photoshop and go to our layer, select our scope texture and go to the alpha channel. Let's set this to 75% in instead of 65% and just make the scope 75%. If we go ahead and save our alpha channel now and once again import everything tutorial 3 and refresh our texture we can see the scope has all of a sudden magically appeared and that is because of the fact we upped the alpha channel. As you can see there's still some wear and tear going on and when we set this to minimal wear 
the scope texture is completely gone. Desirably, we would want it to wear around field tested, 0.25, point, maybe 0.30 seems like a good value to start wearing on the scope. So we once again are back in our alpha channel and fiddle around with our settings. So let's just set this to 83% and call it a day. So now to illustrate my point better how the alpha channel works, let's go to this part of the weapon where I have these shapes laid out. Let's select our circle and make this 25%. If you remember what I just said, 25% means that it's worn at factory new at all times. It is always worn. And this is to illustrate my point. Let's select our triangle real quick. Set this to 50%. Now we can select our other shape, which is the square. Set that to 70%. And last but not least, our rectangle. And set that to, let's say 80%. Okay. So now that we have these shapes laid out on our alpha channel, I can really illustrate my point about the alpha channel. Let's save this again as our target file, import it into PDF added. It's quite a boring process, but it's the way you do it. It's the way that I do it at least, and I'm quite familiar with it, so everything's going a bit quicker. And set this back to factory new. And like I just said, our circle is already worn and that is because we set our grayscale value to 25%. If we start wearing this weapon, so let's put it to 0.15, nothing yet. Okay, now we can see that around well worn, it also the square starts wearing, however, our square, our triangle starts wearing, however, our square and our rectangle are still looking as they are supposed to look. So let's put this a little bit lower at 0.60. And we see that our square starts wearing off and also there seem to be some scratches coming on the rectangle. And then we put this all the way to 0.80, we can definitely see the wear starting. So to recap a little, in Photoshop itself, when you select a grayscale value higher than 50 and it gets closer and closer to 100%, the later it starts wearing within the game itself. As you can see, our rectangle, which is at 80%, grayscale is wearing very late even at the most battle scar it is still visible meanwhile our triangle which starts off wearing at 50% within Photoshop is as good as gone same goes for the square it's worn a lot in comparison to our rectangle the same goes for the scope which wears a little bit differently which starts off wearing at around let's see the end of minimal wear we want of course want it to be higher in reality but for now this will do this is the way um, wear works within the custom paint job finish where within patina and gunsmith are very differently those are chemical types of wear in comparison to paint scratches and all that kind of stuff I will cover those ways of wearing in another video and the same goes for wear types within anodized, multicolored, and hydrographic. So I sincerely hope that you have learned something from this video and that I helped you within creating your first custom paint job finish. As I said in the first tutorial, this tutorial series will not be covering how to create skins or at least how to draw things and how to make things look good. This tutorial series will mainly be focusing on the technical aspect and how you are able to produce good skins. I am helping you producing them and not so much the whole drawing process and all that kind of stuff because I'm personally not as good in drawing myself. So without further ado, I will see you guys in part 4 where we will be talking about testing your skins not only in the workbench but also in game and how to change existing skins into your custom skins. So, without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next one.